What do you miss most? Do you miss scoring the goals or the adulation, the joy you brought the fans? The dressing room. The dressing room? OK. Yeah. Uh, I, I think you always miss the camaraderie, the banter. Um, as as ex-footballers or professional footballers, um, our banter's kind of like a little bit sick. Uh, I don't think a lot of people realise how prolific you actually were because there's only Rooney, Harry Kane, Shearer scored more than you and, and you didn't do penalties. No, no, I, I always set myself when it comes to penalties. If, if I couldn't score an open goal, I mean in open play, sorry, um, I wasn't good enough to play at that level. Now people might look at that and say, I'm, I'm arrogant. It wasn't a case of being arrogant, it's a case of I'm out there to do a job. And if I can't do an open play, I'm, I'm going to struggle. But I, I was very fortunate I could do. Whenever you saw Haaland uh, last year breaking your record, uh, how, did, how did that make you feel? Did you, did you feel it was kind of always going to happen or...? Uh, you know, it, it didn't bother me due to the fact that I never knew. What do you mean you never knew? I, I, I never knew that I held the record and that was the craziest thing. I think the only time I started to realise how close he was when everyone kept saying, oh, he's going to beat Andy Cole's record. But during that period, um, I was never really fussed because that's what records are there for, to be broken. You know, I think that proves just how good a player is. And I think that proves for me personally that I was half decent. So I'll take that. I'd say half decent is probably a, a, bit, a bit of an understatement, really. So. <laughs> so you played with the best, you were managed by the best. Um, what was it like playing under Sir Alex? Did you ever get the, the hairdryer treatment? Oh, 100%. That, that goes without mm. saying. There wasn't many players who didn't get it. Put it this way, he used to get very voracious. OK. You know, he, he would let you know in those certain ways that um, how he felt about you on that certain day. And I, I think we were very used to that because I, I think that, that's what made, made us play even better. You're looking great, Nick. And a lot of people watching this tonight won't know, you know, of the health struggles that you've had over the past few years. Can you tell us a wee bit about that? Yeah, well, I look well, but it's, it's, it's a daily, daily... Hard daily chore, you know. I just try and stay on top of it mentally, you know. About six years ago now, I had a kidney transplant, you know, totally come out of the blue, and it, I, I think it kind of like rocked my world, you know. But yeah, it's difficult mentally. It's, it's difficult. I think getting used to the medication as well is really, really tough because there's good days, there's bad days, you know. There's days when um, I can't get out of bed. So you had a transplant, and it was your nephew. That's right. Yeah. Who was the donor? Yeah. 2017, my nephew donated his, his kidney to me. He just said to me, look, I'll, I'll be honest with you, uncle, I, c I can't see you in this state anymore. You know, and he just wait, said wait, to When me, you say this state, how, how bad did it get? Oh, how, how bad it was. Um, my kidney capacity was down to 7%. Um, I was basically sleeping, what, 14, 15 hours in the, in the day. Uh, getting up was a chore. Walking was a chore. And I'd, I'd gone up to something like 17, 18 stone with all the water retention I was holding. So, yeah, it was, um, it was a difficult time at that time. And what was worse? Was it the physical illness or where your head goes going through something like that? I, I think for me, personally, it was more my head. You know, knowing that I've played football, I've been fit all my life, and then all of a sudden a random illness comes around, which has changed my whole world, to be, to be brutally honest. And then knowing that I've got to deal with whatever's in front of me. I don't think that they really explain to you what goes on when you have such a surgery. You know, I remember the first time I, I sat down with them and said, right, you're going to have to have a, a transplant. That's OK, you're yeah, not a problem. Just to let you know you're going to be on medication for the rest of your life. And I, I remember saying, no, I can't do that. I can't take medication for the rest of my life. I play football and if they give me a course of tablets for a week, I'll take two days and I'm done. You know, when something like that turns up on your doorstep, you kind of realise who your friends are and I know that when you're in hospital, you got a visit from your former captain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roy, Roy came. Yeah, Roy came in, he brought me back five car magazines. And I, I remember the nurse saying to him, if, if you can, Mr. Keane, don't make him laugh. You can see the stitches very tight in my stomach and whatever. So he said, yeah, yeah, no problems. Within about five minutes, he had me rolling around. And I, I was in so much pain. You know, but um, Roy being Roy, he continues just to make me laugh. And I've, I've always had a fantastic relationship with him, you know. Obviously, as a captain, he was an unbelievable captain. I was fortunate to play with such a great player. But away from the football pitch, you know, he, he's always had time for me. You could say we, we, we're a bit of a like as well. Um, I, I don't think I'm as ferocious as he is, you know. Um, 
I, I like to speak my mind, but not as much as he does. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I think when, when, when two people connect like that, I think it's a lot easier. So your son's now playing? Mm -hmm. Proud dad? I'm, I'm, I'm very, very proud. Uh, the craziest thing is I, I think I'm, I'm proud of watching my son play when I was playing. You know, I can actually sit down and watch my son play, whereby I can't like, refuse to watch myself play. Obviously, years later, I, I won't watch myself play football. I won't watch any interviews. I, you don't watch anything no, back? No, no, no. I watch nothing back. I'm terrible. Absolutely terrible. But for me to sit and watch my son, I can do that all day long. I know it's a bit weird, but I've, I've always been like that. And so who's he playing for? He's at Barnsley at the moment. Yeah. OK, so when you go and watch Barnsley and you see them all out there, is there a point where you sort of... He's got the twinkle in the eyes. Oh, yeah, is, are, you, are you thinking to yourself, I could have them? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking to myself when I watch him play, I, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I would do this or I would do that. So, yeah, it, 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 it gets like that. And I, I think you're, you're a better player when you're not playing and you're watching from the stands. So... You know, you still you know, have that record for the quickest 50 goals in the Premier League. You also, I think, have the record for the only footballer with a record that's actually worth listening to. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you remember anything about this? <laughs> uh, I, I, do you know why I remember this? I, we, we won the treble. And I, I was offered the opportunity to do it. And I said to myself, at what stage in my career am I going to be able to win the treble again? Uh, walk on water and wrestle with sharks. You got to go for it. No, oh, 100%. I think, should we, should we have a little look? I think we should have a little look yeah, of uh, yeah. Andy doing his stuff. Andy Cole, break it down. United forever, whatever the weather. Less than 100%, never. The son of a minor, funkiest rhymer. Always in the news, my crew's the headliner. 7.5 mil record breaker. Rapping on the mic, I'm a record maker. Keeping it real, I'm keeping it raw, and I kick racism out the front door. Take that, take that. In the city, girls are pretty. <laughs> Guys tell jokes so they can see Willie. I see what you were doing there. It's all good news. It's all good news. Uh, lots of people watching the Beckham documentary at the minute. Uh, when have you watched any of that? I've not seen it yet. I, I keep no. meaning to watch it, uh, but I've not seen it. And everyone keeps telling me how good it is, so I, I want to get around to watching it definitely. That is a very, very diplomatic way of saying I am not getting involved in anything that took place in that <laughs> documentary at all. <laughs> did you guys play hard and, yeah. and partied hard too, didn't you? That's what life's about. I wish I'd partied a little bit harder. <laughs> um, um, I'm not going to lie. I, I, think... I wish it was a little bit taller. I wish it was a baller. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I, I think we, having the opportunity to be in a position that I've, I've found myself in now and, and looking back, I said, when we won that, I wish I celebrated a little bit more. But you always think about, right, let's forget about that, move on to the next thing. Uh, but, yeah, I, I wish that, yeah, I, I wish I'd been a little bit more like my um, teammate, Yorkie. So, Yorkie's now managing. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think we'll ever see you on the sideline? Who, me? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> no, I, I, I'd, I'd made my mind up when um, I'd, I'd just retired. I remember Sir Alex Ferguson and uh, Mickey Feeney used to say, right, Coley, come on, get your coaching badges done. I used to say, boss, not for me. Mickey's not for me. He said, no, come on, Coley, let's get it done. And I've, I've never really looked back at it. OK. So do you think someone like Sir Alex could get the same job done in the modern game? 100%. 100%, you know. If, for instance, if he was 20 years younger and had the opportunity to manage his team, they won't find himself in a position to find himself in. But that, that, that's football. And that's why every United fan like me is on our knees every night praying for another Sir Alex Ferguson and another Andy Cole. Look, thank you so, so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank, you thank you very much. One more time, give it up for Andy Cole. Thank you.